Control your computer here and be, to be made the presenter. So you say okay on that. So okay. let's see, Skype problems. All right. So you should see a message for us to be able to control your screen and uh, we'll see that in the next second or so. So do you think you might have created a uh, uh, more than one Skype account? Now, I can't see my screen or anything anymore. I think I hit the wrong button. Well, I can see your screen. So that's what we need to see, is I need to be able to see your screen, and that's exactly what I've got right now. As a matter of fact, I can control your screen. So uh, if you'll stop for a moment, I'm going to see. Yeah. All right, so I'm controlling it. And you've got Skype down there in the dock. I just want to kind of mm -hmm. catch up to where you already are mentally, because uh, I may not completely understand the problem. So if we open up Skype, you are unable to log into the account that you thought you were logging into. Is that the problem? That's correct. Okay. So what we need to do is figure out, do you A, know your Skype account? Well, when I opened it, I had two different usernames to choose from that look like mine. Uh -huh. And um, it seemed like the um, Deb MCD 63 was kind of working. Okay. No, Meg McDonald, that's my daughter. Okay. All right, so let's go into the Skype preferences, and we should be able to see some account information here in a moment. We won't see passwords or anything like that, but uh, let's see if we have the ability to, I don't know that I can get in there. All right, I don't think that's it. So let's see. If we click here, let's see how many we have. Okay, which of those do you... I think the top one, Deb McD63, um, at least that's the one I have written in my little, in my password book. You okay. To, well, uh, you go ahead and type your password, and uh, why don't you test with one letter? It should disguise it as a zero, because we don't want uh, Bob to see your password. I've, he's been known to jump on people's Skype and imitate them and call the president. And, okay, that's it. Do you want me to hit return? Yeah, well, or sign in. So let's see if you can sign in. If you can sign in, then I will ask what... See, it says it can't connect. Ah, okay. Hmm. Let me see here. I wonder so if it... I, did, I messed it up a lot. You know how I messed up my Apple ID a lot when you came over to help, but I ended up trying to open a new one with my new email account because this was set up to my old email account, but I know my old email account that it was set up with. Let's see. So I wonder if you've gone to try to go through the password issue. Now this is something that you want to remain private, uh, but have you gone through the problem signing in and it might give you a hint as to what your password is? It didn't give me a hint. It, well, it was trying to send an email to my old email address, which was never going to work. Yeah. So well, then it wasn't giving me a hint about my email. Have, oh, you, have you invested a lot of, how should I say, uh, time and and sending out this this Skype ID with other people, or are you in a situation where you could just wash your hands of it and create a new one based on a new, more modern email address that you use now? Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. Okay, so have you gone down to create an account? Uh-huh. And you've walked through that, and it might say this email address is already in use. Is that the issue that you've gotten into? It might, it might be, and I think it's my own fault because I think while I was trying to get this old one to work, I went in and I was somehow I was able to get to where you could change your information. Mm. So like I, add, instead of like, it doesn't let you get rid of any old emails, but I added my new email to that old account. I see. I see what you did. So what you really want to do is instead of, Hopefully, if it's instead of creating a new Skype account, you want to get in there and try to get this one under control, the one that you have, because you've added a couple of email addresses into it and things like that. Uh, let's go to sign in. There should be a password hint of some sort or maybe the ability to ask a question. I haven't used Skype in a while. Uh, let's go with forgotten password down here and let's see where this takes us to. Uh, I know we've got some other people in the meeting. Uh, put your put your most current email address in. Maybe that's uh, debbie at gmail.com or something. And uh, 
let's see how that acts. Now it may come back saying, eh, we don't have this, this email address on file. If that's the case, then you can use that email to create a new Skype account. Uh, okay, it said they sent instructions to me. So. All right. So, oh, go open your Gmail account. And uh, Bob will get to you in just a second. Thanks for your patience. I had some other people that popped in and they just took off. Maybe they didn't like your, uh, your questions. Okay, and uh, you got that email popping up here in a second, right? You've opened your mail and now hopefully this is your Gmail account and at the top hopefully there'll be a Skype email coming in here in a second. There it is. Oh, great. Are you still doing it? No, I'm going to let you drive. So. Well, you tell me if this is something I need to do on my own or have you... Uh, no, you can do this on your own. Uh, we, pr I don't know if that's the Skype to recover your sign-in details. Okay, so you're going to click on that link. And at this point, you're, I'm going to get off and let you go through this process uh, so that okay. it disguises things. And I'm going to jump on over to the next person, okay? Okay, thank I, you. I think you're on your way here. All right, Bob, you're next. What can I do for you this evening? You got any questions or are you just hanging out? Well, I'm not, no, I'm not just hanging out. I'm getting ready to go to dinner. Um, two simple things, I think. When I started up, I get a message that says there's something wrong with the disk drive or disk is not ejected. Anyway, I hit eject or cancel or something like that and it goes away. Okay. Where is it coming from? Okay. Uh, I wonder what that message is, but let's check a couple things. I'm going to send a message over to you to make yourself the presenter and to control mouse and keyboard. So when you're ready on that, say, yep. And then we're going to be able to look at your screen. Uh, do you have, yeah, you'll see a, a Started up. Sorry, say that again. I have to start it up. It's in the startup process. No, I mean, uh, you should have just gotten a message just now that uh, I can control and look at your screen. You've been made the presenter, so we want to be able to see your screen so that we can work on troubleshooting the problem. Have you seen that message yet? There we go. All right. Okay, so if you don't mind, I'm going to drive here for a second. And I'm just going to minimize some things and get some stuff out of the way so we can get to the actual problem. Um, and we're going to say goodbye to these things. And uh, let's see. I was just on that same website. All right. Now, all uh, right. I wonder if you have a CD in the drive. you think you might have a CD in the drive? I have not had the CD drive connected to the Mac for several months. Okay, so you have an, what kind of Mac do you have? An iMac or what? Uh, MacBook yes. Pro? Okay, an iMac. Driving? No, I'm, I'm just listening right now. Okay. Uh, this Mac. Well, this is a, I don't, that doesn't tell me exactly. Are, are you on a laptop or are you on an iMac? No, it's an iMac on the desk. Okay, so in that iMac, there is a CD drive, a DVD drive on the side. I wonder if... Are you sure? Unless it's one of the, the newest ones that's really thin. Do you have a real new one that's real thin? Well, I'd say it's fairly thin. It's a couple of years old, though. Okay, uh, is, the, the newer ones don't have CDs in them. I'm trying to ascertain if, yeah. if I've you... I've got two on my desk. One of them does have a drive on the side. That's my older one. Okay, but, but that's not the one giving you the message. The one giving you the message is the one that doesn't have a drive, right? Right. Okay. All right, so let's go to your startup items, and let's find out what in the world's going on that might be a, an image of some sort that's not being ejected. So I'm going to go into System Preferences, and we're going to kind of just do some snooping around to see what might be logging in at startup. First thing I want to do is go to Users and Groups in your System Preferences, and we're going to go to Login Items. Okay, yeah, this is our issue right here, I bet you, sir. Um, okay. This is an app that you downloaded that I would bet plenty on that you do not need. Does that even ring a bell to you at all? It does not. Okay, let's get rid of it. That's the issue. That's some piece of software that you downloaded that was expecting to see a certain object connected to the computer, and it didn't. It say, hey, what's going on? Now that won't start up anymore uh, because we've taken it out of the startup items. But let's go, let's go a little step farther here. I'm going to go and uh, just snoop around for a moment and see if I can uh, see if it has any other evidence of, of trying to start up. So I'm going to go into your library folder, and then I'm going to go down to the startup items folder in here, if I can. 
There we go. And I have the hardest time scrolling with people's machines with this software, so excuse my slowness. And there's the startup items folder. And I'm going to look in here and see if there's any evidence of that My Drive Connect software. Uh, I don't want there to be. Doesn't look like there is. So I'm going to come up here to these two other folders. But wouldn't it be up at the very top? My Drive Connect wouldn't be. No, I'm looking for very specific contents within folders. And uh, we don't have that here. And let's go here. Good. Uh, the rest of those are fairly harmless. I'm going to look in one more place, and if you'll let me drive, I'm going to go into your hidden library folder. We've talked about this many times. I go to the word go, hold down the option key, and it shows me the little place that I can go to find the hidden library folder. Let's see if I can get it to populate. Do you see the word library there, Bob? Um, On this menu, this menu item here? I see, go. That, I, I see it now. Never mind. It's doing it for me. There's library. Yeah. I wasn't, the screen wasn't refreshing for me. Now I'm going into your hidden library folder. And now that I'm there, I'm going to go down into launch agents. And I want to see if there's any My Drive Connect. No, nope, we're all good. I don't think you're going to see that problem again, Bob. When you restart this time, it should be nice and clean. Okay? That was a big, big deal. But I do have something a little bit more important than that. Bring it on. Uh, are you still in control? No, uh, I'm sitting and listening. So you tell me. Uh, application folder. Yeah. I have one, two, three, four, six versions of GoToMeeting. Yeah. How do I get them? Get rid of them. I assume I only need the most recent one. I agree with you, and this is what we're going to do. So why don't you drive through this time? You're going to open up a Finder window. So go to the Happy Face, the Picasso Happy Face, and click on that, and that's going to open up a Finder window. GoToMeeting does this. They give you a new version, but they don't delete the old version. Some programs do this, and some programs don't. So now that you have a finder window open, you see on the far right hand column, you'll see the word applications. So click on that applications folder. And now you're going to scroll down into the uh, go to meeting area. And you're going to see all those versions in a row. All right. Mm -hmm. Now click one time on the very top one. Now click all the way, uh, now hold the shift key down and click all the way down to about the fourth one that says uh, V64. Yep. Now you're going to drag those. And I'll tell you what, Bob, I don't know which version of GoToMeeting you're on right now. So we don't want to throw away the one that's actually running. So let's go, before we do this, let's go click on GoToMeeting in the, the icon in the dock and see which version you're on. Oh, see, you're on 631 right now. Oh. So. This is your homework, Bob. When you are, when we're done with this meeting, and you and I kick you out of the meeting, and I say good night. When you quit, go to meeting. Go into this applications folder and throw everything away except for six point four point two. Gotcha. The last thing that I'd suggest you do is drag six point four point two icon down into the dock. You don't have to do that, but it would be nice. Okay, now, should I get rid of these others that we know we're not using? Yeah, you can, certainly. Okay, now, what do I do with them now that I've got two of them highlighted? Hold the command key down and click on the, not the one active, but the 6.4 and the 6.4. So in other, in other words, let's grab a couple of the, more of these right now. There oh. you go, you got it. Good. Now, command delete. That'll move them right to the trash. You can spend the time dragging them to the trash, or command delete will also do it. And that's it. So now you have two to deal with. Okay, and then you say go down to the dock and get rid of... Yeah, you don't have to, but... Drag this one down to the dock. Yeah, that's what I would do. But let's not do that right now. Let's wait until we, we get out of there on that. All right? Okay. All right. That's all my problems. All right, I'm going to move to Tara. Tara, uh, how are you this evening, and what can I help you with? Um, I'm trying to figure out... I'm having struggles with um, iPhoto. Okay. I don't know if you have any on iPhoto. Yeah, I can. Can you help me with that? Yeah, I think so. I'm an interior designer, so I try to organize my pictures by project, and I have somebody that's designed a website for me, so I need to be, who's not in the same location that I am, and I'm trying to get them up in an album so that he can put, so he can use them too, and I can organize them. When you get into um, putting them in the cloud, which I've been doing, I can't move them around once they're in the cloud. Yeah, that's and right. And then I'm confused how to organize them on my own site, and, then, and I tried to get them to Dropbox, and I thought I could communicate with them through Dropbox, 
but that doesn't seem to be working either. So what's okay. the best way to organize photos and get them to share with somebody that, that gives me more flexibility, I guess, than um, photo straight? I really think that Dropbox is the way to go. Uh, so I think we need to get. I think we need to spend our effort on getting Dropbox functional here because that's definitely the way to go, as opposed to sharing through PhotoStream and iPhoto. And we can do that. We can set up a, a shared PhotoStream. So if you and I are best friends and I take three pictures, I can post them up to my photo stream and then you would get them into iPhoto immediately. They would go into your uh, iOS device. Thanks, Bob. We'll see you. Uh, Thank you. And it would, you know, we push it through all those things. But honestly, because you're dealing with a web designer who uh, we don't need to try to even mix up personal stuff and accidentally push some things over. I think you need, uh, this is my opinion, I think you need a folder or a set of folders. Like if you're an interior designer, maybe you have a folder for couches, maybe you have a folder for bathroom wallpaper, maybe you have a folder for colors, whatever. Uh, and in, inside that, uh, you have a master folder like Tara's Awesome Designs. And then inside there, you have... Um, bathroom designs, living room designs, and all these different folders. Then what you do is you share that master folder with the web designer. I'm sure the web designer has a Dropbox account and it sounds like you have a Dropbox yes. account. Yeah. Yes, and I do too. And you know, I do use PhotoStream all the time with my customers and that's how I share stuff with them. Okay. But I can't do anything with it what's in there. I can't so I can't do subfolders in there and I can't mm. move things around no, you so can't. he can understand where I'm trying to be. So yeah. my problem is I'm sitting here today, we're talking to him and we can share with Dropbox. But I can't figure out how to get them from, uh, I've got the cloud, and then I'm pushing them into albums within yeah. Photoshop, and then now, how do I get them to Dropbox? Because I did okay. that a while ago, and I can't, I can't seem to open them, and I can, just saying recently changed. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can help you with that. So let me finish with uh, iPhoto. I, sharing photo stream pictures in iPhoto is awesome for friends and things, but when it comes to business, as you already have kind of stated, you need to be able to organize these things. You need to be able to put them in these subfolders like we just talked about, and that's where iPhoto and photo stream falls apart. It's just a simple area for you and I to push our cool pictures that we take. So let's look at Dropbox, and we're going to look on my machine. So I'm going to open up a Dropbox folder, and uh, here, or here's my finder window, and here is Dropbox in my left-hand column. Now inside Dropbox, what I do is I, I deal with a lot of people uh, that share between myself and, and them. So here's a person named Myron, and I need to share multiple items in this Dropbox folder. So what I always do is I want to make sure I name this folder so that I it, it makes sense to me and it makes sense to the person I'm sharing it with. If I just called it Myron Share, then my friend would it would show up in his Dropbox as Myron Share, and there would be no key to tell him this is also this has something to do with Scotty. So it's really important when you start start your main folder that you share in Dropbox that you put in my opinion his name and, and your name or you make the name of some very unique project. Now, once that folder is shared, everything inside that folder is also shared. So the only folder you have to share, Tara, is the main master folder. Everything else, so if I needed to share this picture, this, this PDF file that I have on my desk right now, all I have to do is open up a finder window, go to my Dropbox account, make sure that I've got that folder selected, and I just drag it in, and now, He's got that, and he just got a notification saying, I just, I just updated that for him. So let's take a look at your Dropbox folder, and let's see what's going on. And, and by the way, if I wanted to uh, share a folder with you right now, I might create a new folder. So let's say, um, let's say here's a folder that I need to share with you, and this is, uh, this is a, a, a set of audio recordings. I'm going to right-click on that folder. And once I right click, I could go to the share options and then I could go down to, uh, let's see, more and it's going to take me to dropbox.com and it's going to ask me, well, what's the email address of the person you want to share this with? I would put in the email address and you may, have you already gone through some of this? Some of it I do. I have a ton of folders in my Dropbox. It's loaded okay. up. I, like even now, I was just trying to get a folder within a folder to title these for them and inside website and I lost it. All right, so let's I'm do it. So I'm going to send a message over to take a look at your screen, and uh, let's see. So we're going to make you the presenter, and when you're ready, hit that you've been made the presenter. On my screen. Yep. Okay. And it's a mess of the screen right now. Mm. Tara, I uh, help me. Have we? Have you and I worked together before? 
Yeah, she did okay. the house at the point. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. So let's let's just minimize iPhoto, and then we're going to talk about how you get them from iPhoto into Dropbox. Okay, so minimize it. Yeah, so let's just minimize the design uh, purchase order. Let's get everything out of the way except for just the Finder window. Okay. I can do all that. Let's see. Yeah, yeah just want to clean things up. All right, so now let's go to uh, a finder window. And I see you've got one open right over there. So you can pull that over and let's go to your Dropbox folder. It's at the top. All right, so now I wonder if you've already created, and, and let, me, let me ask that we go to column view, which is the third view right now. Yeah, that just makes so much more sense to my brain. Yeah. All right, so which of these folders is the one that you think you've shared with your partner person? Um, I've sh I started doing, I haven't, I, well, I've got website. I just started website photos. I did have it under my business, which is JST, and I just separated it out to website photos. And that's one I was just putting stuff in. Okay. Is it okay, is it okay for your partner, and I'll just call him the web designer. Is it okay for the web designer to have access to all of the contents of that folder called website photos? Yes, it is. All right, then that's what we need to share. So uh, before we even do that, let's we'll go ahead and do a right click and share. And I hope that you might know the Dropbox email that he uses. So share this folder. Okay. Uh, nope, nope, that's not what we want. Uh, no, so let's go to right click again, and we want to share this folder. That's the one. Yeah. Now that's probably going to take us to Dropbox.com. Uh, while we're waiting for Dropbox.com to open, let's go up to the Dropbox icon in the do oh, sorry, in the menu bar at the very top. Oh my goodness! And let's uh, let's minimize this. <laughs> so you get rid of some of these things here. Yeah, that'll slow things down a little bit. So if you'll just close some of those things out, and then uh, minimize. Safari at the moment. Oh no, it looks like you're already signed in, so we don't have to minimize Safari. We just need to get to. Um, Where do I get? Oh my God, let me just yeah, let's keep closing a few more. Yeah. You know, last week we had probably 15 people, and today we've only had about three people, so interesting. Uh, I felt like last week I had to run, 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 and go so fast. All right, before we. Uh, you're in Dropbox.com. And you are now ready to share that website photos. So if you know the email of the person, there it is, right there. And you feel like that's the that's the person's Dropbox shared email. All right, then share that folder. Okay. Now, that person just got a notification to uh, join that folder. Okay. All right. Anything that you put in there going forward is going to show up in that person's Dropbox account. So. Now let's talk about the fact that you've got them in iPhoto, and iPhoto is great to look at your pictures and view multiple pictures, but you got to get them out. Well, I don't want to say out. You have to make copies of them and put them into your Dropbox folder. So you're going to have an area that you run your business with, and you're going to have an area where you kind of just look at them inside iPhoto. The area you run your business with is Dropbox, a folder structure. Okay. All right. So. The easiest way to do this, we, we, we're now done with the web browser, so you can quit Safari. Okay. Quit Safari, I'll quit this. Uh-huh. Let me just get all of this. All right, so, so go back over here. Now, question, how, do I, how do I organize all these over here, you know, all these folders? You, you create folders inside this folder. You have multiple folders in there. So right now you've got a Harding and you've got a June 18. So you might make a kitchen design folder. And as long as those folders are inside or to the right of the website photos folder, he's going to see everything. Okay. All right. So to do a folder, I just go up where? Up to the you can do a right click uh, on the white area, folder. new folder. Okay. Yeah. And then drag them into the new folder. Uh-huh. So what you'll need to do, Tara, is have a finder window open and iPhoto open. So you're going to have two windows open at the same time, iPhoto and a finder window that's navigated right down to this area. So you'll say new folder. You do not have to share that new folder because by virtue of it being inside the website photos, that person's going to see it. Okay, so I have to share it every time. So you're right. saying I should have this open next to it. Right, and you kind of stretch out your real estate, your screen real estate, and uh, yeah. 
you could either do a multiple select of I need to grab this one and this one and this one and this one and just drag them over. Drag them over into the folders. Uh huh. So I can just, oh, okay. Yeah. So I can free and then drag it over. Right. So if I'm doing, um, oh, okay. So let's, uh, you know, like, for instance, I'm just trying to do something subtle because then if I delete it out of there. Uh huh. So if I just said, um, so I have, like, the crew and I need some of these for the main part of the website. So I would select them. Oops. You could do Command A to select them all, or you could do the Shift like range, or yeah, you know how to do that. That's fantastic. Now, if, I, if I do this over here, I create a, I need a new folder. New folder and call it. The crew. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now watch what happens. Hit return on that. Now look up. Look up. Well, you didn't even notice it. It was. It moves so quickly. Before you move. Uh, before you do anything, look up here at the drop box icon, which looks like a little open box with a green check at the very top. Yes. yes. Yeah, right. So when you pull these pictures over into the crew, glance up there and you're going to see that green check mark start to churn and churn and churn because what it's doing is uploading them up to the internet. So drop them in the crew. Okay. There they are. And okay. did you drop them in there? Yep. Yeah, and notice up there, look at the top. To the right because I accidentally carried them too far. That's okay. That's exactly what they're supposed to do. They are now in the crew folder. And look what's happening. They're uploading. Okay. A little spinning wheel there. Yeah. Uh, so if you caught him on the phone this very second and say, look at him, he can't see them yet. It's not going to be until they make the journey up into the internet and then down onto his computer, which will take about three minutes or so, maybe less. All right. So your process is done. All right. That's good. Thank you. I needed that. I didn't know how to get those from there to there, so that explained it. All right. I'm going to jump back over to Debbie and check on how she's doing. Feel free to hang out. I might come back to you or see you later, alligator. Debbie, uh, what, uh, did you, were you able to accomplish the Skype login? Yes, I was. Uh huh. Okay. Thank you. Great. Did you have another issue we needed to hit? Um, well, I, while she's talking, I was interested about Dropbox, and I used to have the Dropbox little, little box up here in the top row. And I have it over in my finder. You can see I have it over. Well, I, I don't see your screen right now. We're looking at my screen. So do you want us to oh. take a look at that? I'll send a message well, over. I just wondered where my um, Dropbox box at the top went. Oh, so if you're looking at my screen right now, can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. And you see the little open box with the green check mark, and you're saying that you don't have that going right now? Yeah, and I used to. Okay, so that means that Dropbox is not running in the background or it's hidden. I don't, I don't think that's the case. So what we need to do is make sure that when you turn your computer on, every time you turn your computer on, Dropbox opens. So let's jump back over to your screen and, and it usually I sets this. I'm on an old version of Dropbox too. Well, let's go. Uh, I'm going to send the message over to Control and uh, make the presenter. So you agree to that when you get there. Okay. Show my screen. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was old. Um, Okay. All right. The Skype thing is old. Yeah. Uh, so let's just close Skype so we can be less confused by everything. And we need to go make sure that Dropbox is, opens at login. So I'm just, I guess I'll just control then. So I'm going to go to System Preferences. And this is actually related to another issue that Bob earlier had asked about. And that is, you know, why is this thing happening? It was because this, this item was starting up each time. So um, let's go into, uh, let's see, startup items in users and groups. And let's see, we've got another person coming in here in just a second. And I'm going to look at startup items. And I want to see Dropbox in that list. And Dropbox is in that list. That's good. That's what we want. So let's go and make sure that Dropbox is running in the background. So I'm going to go to the Applications folder and I'm going to find the Dropbox application and I'm going to just pull this up and I'm going to see if I can scroll but I might need you to scroll for me yeah would you scroll down to the Dropbox yeah thank you there we go alright now I'm going to double click this I'm going to make sure it, it is already running because I want to see that icon there might be a setting for Dropbox to not show its icon in the dock or in the menu bar that is Let's see. Uh, I, oh, 
Oh, there it is. All right. It's running. And, uh, and it's syncing. But some reason you would quit it. Uh, the next time you start your computer, Debbie, it will log in. It will start. I think you may have accidentally quit it. And I bet you haven't restarted your computer in a while. Well, but I've, been, I've gotten this Dropbox update, and I haven't been able to successfully do that because it tells me to drag something to something. And yeah, into the applications folder. Okay, well, we're going to do it. To we're going to work on it right now. Ann, I see you popped in. I'm going to get to you in just a second if you're just hanging out. Uh, let's see. Let's find what you're in Firefox here. Um, you guys okay? Yeah, let's see. Can we get to your downloads folder in Dropbox? All right, there it is. And let's just say open this right now. And hopefully Firefox will help us out here. And we're going to say goodbye. We don't need you. And let's quit. There we go. All right. So it's asking us to drag that, or actually here, double click to install it. And we'll get the newest version of Dropbox. Let's just, yes, and this is fine. We're going to say, yep, that's fine. And it should install it. And let's see how we do. I think we there's something, there we go. All right, I think you're on your way here. All right. Awesome. Thank you. While that runs in the background, we're going to jump over to Ann. Hello, Ann. Do you have any questions for us this evening? Ann's using the, the web viewer, so she might not have audio. Uh, oh, uh, let's see. Ann's, Ann, you're using the web viewer, uh, not the application. I'll send Ann a message to see if we can give her the ability to download. There we go. Okay, maybe that'll help her. Uh, maybe she'll jump in here. All right, uh, let's see. Back over to Tara. Tara, did you have any other questions while we're waiting on Ann? Yeah, sure. I'll ask you one more question. Um, one of the other things I do a lot is I do I have to do screenshots out of um, like I'll screenshot something from a vendor's web page. Now yeah. when I screenshot that. Um, it, it goes on the it goes on the desktop. Is yeah. there a way to make that go into iPhoto directly? Because I feel like I'm having to pull it from the desktop, or should I be doing it another way? Uh, I don't think you can make it go into iPhoto automatically. You can reroute it into other folders, and that's a little tricky to do. It requires opening up Terminal, and I don't think we want to go into that. But um, but yeah, it won't just automatically. Not that I know of. Now I haven't. Let me let me go do a quick Google search because Google is smarter than I am. Uh, where there's a will, there's a way. And believe it or not, there's something. I mean, it, it's it's above what you probably want to invest in in making happen. But there are something called Apple scripts, and Apple scripts are little sets of instructions that a normal person, well, a little advan more advanced than a normal person, can use to write a, like a program to say, hey, when this happens, do this. So uh, let's see what Google has to say. Uh, let's see. Uh, screenshot uh, directly into iPhoto. Let's see what happens there on that. Uh, save your screenshots into Dropbox. Uh, I, can take them to, I don't know if that's the way I want to do it either. I put them up to the, I put them up to the cloud to share with my customers as I see something. Yeah, you can put them right into Dropbox. Uh, Dropbox has the ability to re to reroute that or actually save a, a piece of that. Now, the little behind the scenes on this is that uh, in, if you look at if you're looking at my desktop right now in Dropbox, I clicked on the, the little arrow or the little icon at the top, and I've come over to the gear switch. Click on the gear switch, and now I can look at preferences. And one of the things that you can do with Dropbox is you can say under I think it's under import share my screenshots using Dropbox. Now notice I've got mine unchecked. The reason is Dropbox wants this to be checked and they want enable camera uploads to also be checked is because they want you to fill up your space so that they can send you an invitation to spend money and buy more space from them. 
Uh, most people are fine with just the two gigs because for most people, Dropbox is just text documents and things. But if you start to increase the, the, time, the, the amount of time you use Dropbox, you might increase that space. To find out how much space you have and how much you're using, same thing. Icon at the top, click on it, go down to the gear switch, and when you click it, it'll tell you. So right now, I've got 20 gigs of space and I've used 33%. Uh, you, might use, uh, you might have two gigs of space if it's a free account and you might be using you know half of that I don't know alright okay so where do I find that I don't even see I can't I don't see your control panel. do you not see my my screen are you not oh, seeing so <laughs> on my screen if I click up at the top the little Dropbox icon and I go to the gear switch when I click that I can see preferences now I select preferences and I, it'll tell me right there what's my percentage you see I have 33.6 oh, okay. right yeah. up there at the top yeah Okay, so if I look at that, it'll tell you what you've got. That's right. Okay. It, for anybody listening, if I ever go too fast, I always record this this session and I post it to my website under previous town halls. So if you felt like, a man, he really went really too fast, you can always go back and watch it. I'm going to move to Ann here. Ann, if you're listening, what can I do for you, Ann? I see you've muted yourself, but, uh, oh, well, she says, uh, yep, what, what can I do for you, Ann? Um, I have a iPad Mini now. Yeah. New me. And uh, can you print? Uh, we're, uh, I don't know if you recall. You probably don't recall. We have a home network where we have a PC as a kind of a server for our household. And so we can print from all of our computers through that server. And I'm just wondering if I can do that from my iPad Mini. The way, it's funny that you should ask this because I have something in my hand that will do this thing, this exact thing, but there are two ways to do this. If your printer supports what's called AirPrint, AirPrint is a technology that Apple adopted and most printer companies use it. You buy a new printer, it says AirPrint on the side. HP calls it ePrint, I believe, but they're basically the same thing. So if your printer has that support, then you should be able to print from your iPad mini going directly over to the to the AirPrint printer. If you don't have an AirPrint printer and you love that printer and you don't want to buy a new printer, then you can use a device like this. This is a print server, uh, what's it called? This is the Lantronics print server. I think this runs about $100, but this basically does the same thing. It turns any printer into an AirPrint printer. Uh, I haven't used it yet, It's but uh, you know, I'm, it does what it does. It, it, it's a little expensive to do that, but um, we should say if we love our printer because we got a new printer August of 2013, and all of a sudden it's just jamming repeatedly. I cannot print one sheet, and we ordered it on Amazon, so it's not like I can take it back. But I think we should buy a new printer. What is okay. the what is the make of that printer that you're using? Epson. Okay, I will tell you my rundown of printers. Uh, when I walk into a business or a home, if I see an HP printer, usually I'm like, okay, I, we're going to make this work. This is going to be fine. If I see a Canon or an Epson, I usually go, oh, God, all right, good luck on this. I hope I don't have to tell the person I'm working with that they need a new printer. But um, and, and then everything else below that is, is not worth it. So if I'm going to buy a printer, I'm going to buy an HP. If I'm going to buy, and then there's, there's two versions, the, the Inkjet and the Photosmarts. The, I'm sorry, Inkjet and LaserJets. Photosmart is an Inkjet printer. The Photosmarts are uh, sort of a consumer level. They usually have several ink cartridges, and you know they, they do fine. Uh, the the HP software really works well. It's easy to use. Uh, it's easy to, to to work with. It's just I usually it only takes me a couple seconds dealing with an HP printer. They are the least likely to have problems. The Epsons and the Canons they tend to have more problems. From my experience, um, we had a Canon. I swear for like five years, with no problem. I don't even remember why we got rid of it. Yeah. But um, we got this Epson now. But so if you, were, if I were going to go buy a printer tomorrow, what that has an airport printer capability, and I don't know, even know if I want inkjet or laser jet. My husband might know. All right. Well, all right, do you want to print out? Do you print out your own pictures on photo paper? Rarely. Okay. Do you need faxing? No. All right. 
Uh, do you print a lot? Um, just a lot of black and white papers, like I proofread things and stuff when I print them out. Rarely do I print in color. Um, sometimes I do co copy something, but we don't even use, the printer has a scanner, but we don't even use that because I've discovered that if I just take a photograph of something, yeah. I can just, it's better than scanning it. Okay. Um, so the, the HP laser jets are really good too. I'm trying to pull up here on this search. Uh, let's see, HP laser. Now, laser jets are going to be more expensive. Uh, they tend to last longer. Their ink lasts a longer period of time. They come in cartridges. Let's see, I've got, got one over here. Give me a second. Uh, you know what ink looks like, but this is more of a laser jet type of cartridge. If you can see my camera, that you can see me. This is a laser jet, laser jet cartridge. It's powder, and the powder lasts a long, long time. Usually, I've got, I just got some all over my fingers just now, uh, but it lasts a long time. But they're a lot more expensive. You might have to pay seventy or eighty dollars for one cartridge on a laser jet versus the twenty or thirty dollars on an ink jet. But they don't dry out as long. Um, so I feel like we're constantly replacing the. Um Inkjet cartridges, and yep. they seem to be fairly expensive. Yeah, that's the that's the secret of the uh, the the printer market. The markup on printer ink, I believe, is around two thousand dollars a gallon. So if you right. took yeah, because they're not giving you a gallon, they're giving you a couple drops, and you paid thirty some dollars. So if you take those few drops and you squeeze them into a bucket, and you make you squeeze enough of that to make one gallon, you will spend about two thousand dollars in ink to get one gallon. So they they sell the printers at a loss. And they make their money on the on the ink, uh, and they even have these computer chips now on the ink cartridges, so that when they drain out, you can't use a syringe or refill them. So you just kind of have to suck it up and buy an actual um, an actual HP branded or Epson branded um, printer cartridge. All right, so does it cost more than inkjets. Say that again. Laser jets cost more than inkjets. Yeah, they do. I mean, uh, the, you know the the H the laser jets. Everything about a laser jet is more expensive. Uh, so generally, here's a here's a laser jet that uh, this one's brand new. Now I have not had any interaction with this one. This one's got scanning capability and all that. The ones that I have been the happiest with. Let me see if I can find um, the one. I don't know the number on it right off the top of my head. Let's see. Here's a list of laser jet like this kind of guy right here. You see the laser jet the laser jet 400. This is no frills. This is just I to see that on your screen. All I see is you. Oh, really? Uh, maybe I'm not sharing my screen right now. Let me see. Can anybody else in the meeting see my screen? No. Oh, that's too bad. All right, I should be able to see it. All right, tell me you should if you can see it now. No. Uh, give it a second. It should show up. Okay, so I just went to HP.com and I looked up a couple of printers. So here, here are here are eight, uh, the LaserJet printers, and there's this one for 170 and this one for 200. This one has a scanner, which is the M127. This is the one that I would be more interested in. This is just a workhorse. All it does is print basically a, a lot of black and white. It might have color printing, but uh, this is the one that I would look into. In other words, one without a scanner. If you want an inkjet, a real popular one is the Photosmart 7520. Uh, I have a lot of people that use this one, and it's a real decent printer. But that LaserJet 400, it, is, it prints black and white and color. Yeah, I'd have to look it up. Probably. And does it have that air print thing you were talking about? Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, right there, ePrint. Yeah, it has that. So it's going to show up on the network. Yeah, okay. see where it says right there, Apple's AirPrint technology. Okay. And so when I'm in my iPad, how do I do that? Like this. Uh, let's see. Can you see my phone? You see my phone on the screen? Uh -huh. Okay. So I'm going to go to my notes, and I need to print this out. So I'm going to go down to the bottom left-hand corner and hit that little, uh, that little box down in the bottom left-hand corner with the arrow on it. And then I see a print button. 
Now, iPad and iPhone are the same thing, so I select print. Now it's gonna go, okay, well fine, tell me which printer you want me to use, and I'm gonna select select printer. Now in my house, I don't even know if I have, yeah, I've got an AirPrint printer. Across my house, I've got an Epson. So um, that one that, that came, I didn't buy it, it came to me, So and that's all I'll say. So I would select that one, and now I'm ready to print to that printer from my iPhone. I can do the same thing with um, a picture? Yes, like a yeah. Yeah, I just went to notes. You can do it with anything. Uh, let me see if I can go into my photos real quick. Photos, and I'm going to print that picture that I've got. And I'm sorry, I went full screen on that. Yeah, yeah. So, same thing. Okay. Yeah. I, I, say that again. What size will it print? Whatever you sent it. AirPrint is a pretty limited technology. I don't think you have customization features, but you know what? It's been a while since I printed a picture through AirPrint, so I, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Um, Did you have a follow up? Um, yeah, one other thing. Mm -hmm. If I have some video footage that's in my Dropbox, I don't know if I can show it to you. Uh, I'll jump but, over and make you the presenter. Okay. okay. Uh, on my screen. Give me a second and you should see a message to be made the presenter. Okay. And now we are looking at your screen. Okay. Um, there's old video footage that's on. Uh, okay. That is, you know, was, video was made like, you know, 30 years ago. And then someone has made a WMV file of it. Yeah. And can iMovie strip that and get parts of it out? If so how? Yes, but before you put it into iMovie, and I, I just I don't think that iMovie is going to support WMV. You're going to need to convert it. Uh, yeah. And I don't think iMovie will do that for you. But it's easy to convert it. Uh, I would. Um, Let's see, just to convert it, I would go and grab, um, I'll see if VLC will convert it. Give me a second, if VLC, uh, VLC, I'm trying to, this file is yeah, that's a WMV file. So you need to convert that to an MPEG-4 or something that iMovie's going to like. And I'm trying to decide whether to recommend Handbrake to you or VLC. Uh, let me take a second and see if... VLC will convert it. Yeah, VLC will do it. So you're going to do a search on the internet for a program called VLC. And VLC will give you the ability to convert that video. Let's see if I can pull it up here on my screen. VLC. And we're going to jump over. And once you have it in a, in a friendly format that iPhoto understands, then... Um, It'll it'll go a lot better. We don't see your screen again, or I don't. You should in just a second. Okay, so here's this here's VLC, and I've got it open on my computer, and in the top left hand corner I see VLC. So let's pretend that I've got a video. I don't have any Windows videos laying around, but I've got a video loaded up. If I go under File, I see I should see the ability to convert. Uh, I don't have it here but I had it on another version on another computer just now I'm using a um, a, a, a beta version of 10.10 .10, so uh, I don't see it here but it, it should be on on yours is it is that a free software is that yeah software no it's free it's free uh, so you can try out VLC and if you have problems with that you can use handbrake handbrake will definitely convert it download the official VLC media player for Windows no, uh, VLC, it's going to have an icon of a road, road cone, uh, and I believe, let's see, where's the website? See, if you just do a search for like VLC and Mac, that should take care of it, VLC, Mac, yeah, videoland.org, that's, uh, that's where you want to go. Download Mac. Media, it says download VLC Media Player for Mac OS 10. Yeah, 
you know, try that and see if that will convert it. The, the version of the media player that I'm using over here it will convert it. I'm looking over on another computer. I'm using 2.1.5 and it will convert it. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what version I'm using of this on this machine. Let's check it out real quick. Uh, one, yeah, look at that. See, I'm using a really old version of, of VLC on this computer that you're looking at right now. So uh, the, the version that I have over on the, the left-hand side of my computer screen, it, it gives you the ability to convert. All right? All right. I have a little new subject, but someone else's turn, you can come back to me. Okay, I'm going to open it up. I've, we've gone around a few times, so if anybody has a question, just jump in. Debbie or Tara, any other follow-ups? All right, then uh, Ann, take it. Go ahead, Debbie. Sure. Okay, so we have, as you mentioned earlier, that we have a, a very old PC that kind of acts as some sort of a network server for our household. Yeah. And it also has a lot of old files on it. And um, it, it seems to be dying slowly. Yeah. And um, I don't want to put a lot of old photos on it that I don't want to lose. Yeah. So. I'm trying to figure out um, what to replace that with. It's you know not something. My husband does have in his office a Dell Blade server yeah. that like used to run his whole office. It's kind of a PC. Do we just bring that from the office? Well, it might be overkill. You might be using way more than you need. It sounds like. You're just using what's called a NAS, a network attached storage. And uh, really what that is, is a hard drive on the network. So I have several on my computer uh, or on my network. So if I give you an example here, I open up a finder window and I've got a, a hard drive connected to the back of an airport extreme or, or I've got a hard drive etherneted into my network that's like an ethernet drive. And then over here on the left hand side I, I can, of my finder window, I can grab or I can get to those hard drives. So maybe you don't actually need a dedicated computer. Maybe you just need a hard drive on your network that is also being backed up. Uh, oftentimes people just store things on a hard drive thinking, oh, it's over there. And then it, that hard drive dies and they lost all that data on that. So that's one thing where some sort of server or media server would maybe have a backup system in place. So maybe that PC that you've got in your house that you just have a hard drive with stuff that you like to see on, maybe that has a backup program like ghost or something that's backing up to another hard drive but you don't back it up to itself i think it's kind of divided but i also i'm not even sure but i think it's also backing up to dropbox so i cannot even remember uh i have to have you come out for a session yeah both of both of those statements that you just made uh wouldn't be very healthy and i'll explain why the statement you said is backing up to itself if you have a drive that's partitioned and you have it backing up to one part of the drive, well, the drive's gonna die. A partition doesn't drive, the, die, the drive dies. So, um, so if, you, if you had it backed up on one side and then the whole drive dies, you've lost everything. So you need multiple drives. Uh, if you have things backing up the Dropbox, then you probably are, maybe you paid for a lot of space and even if you paid for their huge amount of space, you still probably have more files than you have Dropbox space. I think the biggest might be a terabyte with Dropbox or something, and I don't know what the fee on that would be, but way more expensive than just having a hard drive. So if I, I go ahead. Carbonite business. My husband uses Carbonite for his business. Yeah. But he needs, as you can see, um, Dropbox, but I think that might just be backing up this computer. There are different plans for, for Carbonite. Carbonite will back up on the lowest plan. Oh. Carbonite, Carbonite will back up. Well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Crash Plan Central for all of our computers. Okay, so Crash Plan Central or Crash Plan will back up, and it, it's just like Carbonite. It has multiple versions of plans, so you could use Crash Plan to back up your entire computer onto the internet. Uh, but I'll tell you, nothing in the world beats having a physical hard drive in your hand, like this one right here, and you plug it up to your computer and it backs up that drive because if your drive dies and you call me or the Apple store to replace it 
first thing I'm going to say is, okay, what kind of backup do you have? And if you hand me a drive that, that is backing up with Time Machine, then I'm going to bring the computer back to you the next day and everything's going to be done. If you tell me I was backing up through Crash Plan, I'm going to say, well, give me about a week to two weeks as I download all that data back. It's kind of a nightmare. It's good because it's a nice little safety net just in case somebody breaks into your house or you have a fire or something. But ultimately, the best thing to do, in my opinion, in my experience, is have a backup drive that you physically can touch in your hand and occasionally you plug it up to your computer and it just makes a backup of it. Or you can just leave it plugged up all the time. Um, all right, so he says we have a bunch of equipment at the office, so yeah. I'll have to figure out I don't even think the crash plan's working on that desktop. It says the destination is unavailable. All right, so Crash Plan, like I said, has multiple versions. If you if you don't want to pay for Crash Plan, you can download the application and say, "Hey, Crash Plan, I want to use you for free." And it'll say, "All right, well, if you're going to use this for free, then what we're going to do is point your backup uh, target to a, another computer in your house. So basically, you're backing one computer up to another computer. If you pay them money, then you can back up to their servers on the internet." I pay the money. Okay, so you just need to make, yeah, you have to go into the settings and, and but, um, all right. Well, I think we've hit quite a bit here tonight. I'm going to shut it down for the evening. Thanks to everybody for joining me. If I went a little bit fast, I always record this and I post it on my website. And uh, hopefully, if you uh, have any questions, just send me an email and I'll see you all soon. Thanks, Bobby. All right, bye. bye.